Good day and welcome back to chemistry videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unru and I'm going to be talking about enolates. So let's talk about enolates. What we're looking at when we're describing enolates is we're basically saying that the most acidic protons that exist in a molecule such as this are actually the protons that I've highlighted in green. Okay, so the, they make the best electrophiles, mostly because these carbons are a little bit resonance stabilized by the fact that they have O's on the opposite side of them. They're in esters, and so that really makes the H's in between the carbonyls the best to pluck off, especially by a strong base or a strong nucleophile. So let's put a strong nucleophile in here. Let me do it in a different color other than pink. And in this case, we're going to use the ethoxy group. Okay, so when we do this, okay, or th this, um, yeah, let's we'll call it ethoxy. That's fine. Okay, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these lone pairs and we're going to attack that H. Now, when I attack that H, let's ask where the electrons between the C and the H can go, right? They can go, could they go in this bond? Well, no, that would put five bonds around that carbon. Could they go in this bond? No, well, that would put five bonds around that carbon. The only place that they can go are directly on the carbon as a carbanion. All right, and so I'm going to get a cool moment like this. Ooh, and doesn't that look like a great nucleophile? All right, that looks like something that wants to react, and it does. Okay, notice I only did that with one of the H's. There's still another one there, but I'm kind of highlighting the fact that it's um, an ethoxy group, right? Or it was taken off by the ethoxy group, sorry. It's now a lone pair, and it's a carbanion. And so if I put it in with something like this, then these look like they have excellent, excellent electrophiles, right? Let's put the electrophile right there because there's a leaving group right there. Ooh, and there we go. Let's make that. And then I have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and then the BR. Okay, isn't that cool? And now, if you thought about this for a moment, there's another H here, right? So what's the likelihood that this could happen again? Well, it's pretty good. So I have a second equivalent of the ethoxy group. All right, and there's my minus. I'm going to have it attack that H. Where do those electrons grow? But on this carbon right here, right? And when that happens, by the way, when these attacked, this also had a byproduct of This is minusing out. Actually, I should just say that comes off as it goes, right? All right, and then I'm going to get something like this. And let's make this a little bit more interesting so that you see exactly where it can attack. Right? And then you can get a second attack, right? The second attack of this lone pair on that carbon, eliminating, eliminating that leaving group. Ooh, 
Ooh, I'm squeaky. Mm, that is a really bad version of that. I apologize, especially because it runs into my lovely, my lovely arrow, right? Ooh, let's make sure that comes off. All right, let's let's go ahead and do this. And then here's the part that I added. That's this part right here. Okay. All right. Having said that, maybe we can do some dimensionality that that's coming out towards you. Okay, so having said that, now what is this gonna do? Is this stable as it is? And it really is not. So maybe at this point, since the second step might have water in it, we're gonna have a water attack each of these O's. Right, let's do that at the same time. All right, so that's going to happen here. Okay, attack there. The electrons go, go on to that O. Let's have that attack there. And the electrons go on to that O. It's not perfect, but you get the point. All right, and then I get something like this. running into my previous moment, that's actually ooh, separate, right? And then I have O with an H and an H. Mm-hmm. Let's make this a little longer. Can you guys see that? Here's my there you go, and let's do an O with an H and an H here. These are both pluses. And then I have my five-membered chain there, okay? And then an intermolecular transfer can happen. Let's say that one of these lone pairs, and it, you can see it much more easily here, attacks one of these H's, and those electrons go on here. Let's do that over here too, even though it's really far away. All right. And now, what do we have? Woo, I'm running out of board space. A little bit, okay. Um, actually, let me draw this last structure and then we'll call it good. Oops, I made a bond to an H there. So I better do my bond to my H here. And that's a minus. And this is now a plus, by the way. This is an OH. Same thing goes for down here. This is an H. Do you guys see that? And there's an OH coming up here. My cyclopentyl's right there, okay. And now the carbonyls regenerate. Have bonds move in. This is a great leaving group. The bonds move in. This is a great leaving group. And you get, I wonder if I can, draw this right here. Maybe, maybe not. Let's do it really small. Woo! Mm-hmm. You can still see it. Okay, and then we'll pick up with this one in the next step up here. So up here, I'm gonna erase a little bit. Gotta remember everything we just did. Woo! 
That was a lot of good fun, wasn't it? Let's erase this top part and hope that we have enough moments to be able to get that. Oh, nice. Nice and erased. Nothing like a clean board to work with us on. Okay, so what we have right now. Oh, that is an awful, awful, awful five handed moment. Sorry about that. I can tell it's awful. Let me draw the other chain part first. Ooh, there we go. Uh, let's draw these out. Mm-hmm, that's yeah, awful. It's still awful, but it's okay. Okay, so now what happens? Well, this is a little bit interesting. So what happens here is that you start to get intermolecular transitions. And those intermolecular transitions are trying to go towards something more inherently stable, okay? So in the case of this, what we're gonna get is we are going to get an intermolecular transition that will stabilize our final product here, okay? Our final product that we're going towards is just this. I did that kind of badly, sorry. Okay, the question is, how can I do that easily? Okay, the thing that happens here is that you have to have something start a chain of events, right? And so the start of the chain of events needs to be something that will allow um, your product to form. Okay. Having said that, I don't have either of my carbonyls in the right place to make it seem like I'm doing this for real. So let's do this. Let's put that right down there. Okay. Cause then it'll make better sense as to why it's doing what it's doing. Let's have this in pink, maybe in blue. Pluck off that H. When it plucks off that H, what happens here? Well, these electrons go in there, right? And you form CO2. This bond decides to go away. And maybe in order to make this happen, this needed to become a minus, right? So what you end up getting is you end up getting Something like this. Plus CO2, right? And when that happens, then we're very close, right? In order to get from here to here, all that we need is we need for one H to move. So let me expand this out a little bit so that you can see it. Let me erase this so that it doesn't look like I'm hiding something. Although it might look like I'm hiding something, right? So here, if I expand this out to this H right there, then maybe the double bond can attack that H and these electrons can go back down, right? And then my H ends up on this carbon in order to stabilize. This is an enol and it's gonna just automatically tautomerize to the keto version, okay? So the trick is to get here. And once you get here, then it makes good sense as to why it goes here. But this intermolecular transfer is really weird. And part of the reason why you have to see it is because you know what you're trying to get towards and you're also saying, well, what's the most stable I could, thing I could possibly get out of this? Well, it might just be carbon dioxide.
And maybe you would say that this just forms the minus first so that it can attack the H, so that those bonds can go into the double bond, so that this portion right here, this is going to become CO2, which means that bond has to break and become the double bond. Okay? All of that can be a little confusing depending on how you're feeling about it, but sometimes it can just be kind of fun. And so hopefully it'll strike you as a fun moment. Until next time, adieu.